In this video, we will learn about the newest procedure that has been approved by the American Society of Metabolic and Bariatric Surgery called the Single Anastomosis Duodenal Bypass with Sleep Gastrectomy, SADI-S for short. This procedure is usually recommended for the super obese patients. It is considered a variant of the biliopancreatic diversion with sleep gastrectomy. We learn who it is for, who shouldn't have it, the risks and complications, outcomes and conclusions from this. Let us now learn how this procedure works. Firstly, we need to understand the basics of human digestion. This is the gullet, the stomach, food comes down, the sphincter, there's a vigil sphincter, the stomach churns the food over and passes it through the pylorus, the exit point, point of the stomach where there's a muscle, and another sphincter then down into the duodenum. In the duodenum, the food is met with bile coming down from the liver down this tube called the bile tube, which helps in digestion of the fats as well as the pancreatic juice coming down from the pancreas through this tube called the pancreatic tube. And together, the biliopancreatic secretions cause a breakdown of the food, its digestion and ultimately absorption through the whole length of the small bowel right down to the end before it enters into the colon. In the SADS procedure, in the first part, the stomach is transected so that the stomach is turned into a tube. This procedure is called the sleeve gastrectomy which in its own right is a very powerful weight loss procedure. In the second part, the early small bowel called the duodenum is divided just beyond the pylorus, the exit point of the stomach, and then a, the, a loop of the small bowel is taken up and then joined to the exit point of the stomach so that the food bypasses the secretions of the liver, bile, and the pancreas and goes down a separate route. This is now the final configuration where food comes down the gullet, enters the stomach, and then goes down into the small bowel. The entry point of the food into the bowel is a long way downstream from where the enzymes and bile is produced and enters the small bowel which is in this end or the biliopancreatic loop or biliopancreatic limb food essentially bypasses this limb before meeting with these enzymes and bile and that's where now digestion takes place in a much shorter part of the small bowel the common channel channel or the digestive loop and this typically is 250 to 300 centimeters in length the shorter this limb is the more malabsorption and the more the weight loss but shortening it further than this can produce severe nutritional disability in patients. So this is the video pancreatic diversion with sleeve gastrectomy. Over here you can see more complicated procedure where the food enters the stomach and then enters a loop of bowel which has been disconnected and this food travels a long way down without mixing with the bile or the pancreatic juice which comes down a separate route. Finally the two meeting down here and then forming a common channel which is shorter than compared to sad yes. The whole point is that this is a simpler operation, less complex and has been designed designed to overcome some of the issues associated with BPDS in the long term, which I'll describe later. The SADS is best suited to for the super obese with a body mass index of greater than 40. The body mass index is calculated by dividing the height in meters square by the weight in kilograms. Patients with a BMI of less than 50 but greater than 40 are candidates provided they have one of the risks associated with obesity, such as type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular, hypertension, heart disease, obstructive sleep apnea, respiratory, mechanical, reproductive, and several others. So who are not candidates? These are patients with who are high anesthetic risk and would not tolerate a general anesthetic, patients with coagulation disorders, patients who have failed the surgical assessment by an expert surgeon for whatever reason, patients who have reflux disease, those with psychiatric conditions such as eating disorders, including those who are unable to comply with directions related to nutrition, mineral and vitamin supplements in the long term. And these operations are performed by expert surgeons in units that are highly experienced. A low risk and complication rate is seen and when these do arise, these are treated expertly. So risks include bleeding. This could be from the stomach end or inside the stomach or at the end of the stomach or at the other end. Leak and abscess from the joints, both from the stomach, the joint with the small bowel and with the duodenum. Picture forming in the stomach or the twist in the stomach tube or at the anastomosis over here. Hernia and obstruction due to the new configuration. The bowel may twist and form an internal hernia or may obstruct in the long term. Reflux may arise which may be difficult to deal with. Patients may develop nutritional problems in the long term such as vitamin and mineral deficiencies as well as protein malabsorption may lead to low protein states and some patients may develop long-term diarrhea which may not always be easy to deal with. Mortality risk of less than 1% 
has been reported by expert centers. Now let's review the outcomes from this operation. There has to be a caveat. This is a relatively new procedure and long-term data is still awaited. The weight loss achievement is quite staggering. 80 to 90 percent of excess weight loss over the course of the two years. It seems like this is maintained over the long term. Similar success story for type 2 diabetes with either remission or much better control of type 2 diabetes. Cardiovascular other risks of being overweight and obese are similarly significantly reduced. Promisingly, it, it, it may serve as a salvage operation for patients who have failed the sleep gastrectomy and still are significantly overweight or those who've had a gastric band in the past. Now, there has to be a caution with this operation. The patient may develop new onset reflux after this procedure, which is not easy to deal with, or long-standing diarrhea, and patients are prone to vitamin and mineral deficiencies over the long term. The claimed superiority over the biliopancreatic diversion with sleep gastrectomy lies in its less complex nature and consequently lower risk of complications, such as hernia and intestinal obstruction, diarrhea, pro protein malnutrition and vitamin deficient and vitamin and mineral deficiencies. Head-to-head -head comparison and long-term data is awaited to confirm these claims. In conclusion, this is a promising procedure for the super obese patients. However, long-term data is awaited to declare it as a clear winner. It's very effective in weight loss and management of type 2 diabetes. The superiority over the biliopancreatic diversion of sleep gastrectomy has to be established, may serve as a salvage bariatric operation. But we have to be cautious in terms of its association with reflux, diarrhea, and vitamin mineral deficiency.